Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts. How are you? Joining me tonight in the co-host seat from the uh, cold far north, Bad Dog, a.k.a. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> Damn, that new start blew my hat off. Where the heck did that come from? You like that? I worked a long time on that yesterday to get it just right. That was really amazing. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, I. Um, it's one of those things where you do the first one and it takes forever, and then you do the second one, it takes a little less. But now I got it dialed in because I whipped up a new one for uh, my um, uh, unboxing tiki mugs too. So yeah, no more, uh, no more half-assing it. We're making real good intros now, and maybe Rick, I'll Rick, you hear that? <laughs> Rick? I can make one for you. <laughs> it was Value Village. Thrifted, 99 cents. Value Village. Well, thank you for joining me tonight for this discussion about eBay making the globe a tiny little place. So let's uh, let's introduce our guest. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different mug, and I try and match it up to our guest. And our guest this week is... All the way from New Jersey, by way of Australia, Lee Graham. Hey, buddy. <laughs> He's frozen or just messing hey. with me? How are we? <laughs> What's happening, man? How are you? Not much. Are we, are we tiki talking at the moment? We are tiki talking because you, although we're living doing? in New Jersey, are from Australia. And there is a mug maker out of Australia named Danielle yeah. Mann. And she made this mug for a, a magazine called Bachelor Pad. So it's a little swanky tiki with a fez and a couple of ladies. And since this, this rum is taking the longest journey ever, Lee got me this Quiet Canyon rum from Australia. So I'll be drinking that this evening. That'll put hair on your chest. Woo! I yep. would turn this upside down, but if I did, it would all pour out on top of me in celebration or on top of Lee, one of the two. <laughs> so this is, this is I'm doing my den of sin tonight. Nice. <laughs> and what's in the den of sin? Non-sin. So no. fruit. Oh, that's well, nice. I don't drink. You know I don't drink. I know, so I know. Like, Fruit, I promise you, I didn't. Fruit punch, it. and he did, and Rick didn't spike it. So, what are you, what are you drinking tonight, Lee? Well, can we say it? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, we could. Where's the camera? <laughs> that, because I wanted to fit in. I bought this, and we're drinking, oh, Crimson Skull, which is uh, a local brewery down here at um, Jersey. Uh, Barrow, which is a Bones Brewery, so I'm supporting local business tonight. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Yoo-hoo. Lee's, Lee's showing me plastic tiki mugs, so I lose my mind. <laughs> I've, I've already, Lee, I've already had that done to me when I did a plastic tiki mug a couple of years ago, so. <laughs> Man, his delay is so nutty. We did Sorry. we did practice earlier today. There was no delay, none. <laughs> and we did two no, practices. No. I can. I... Hey. Wow, this I'm is getting, getting a weird sound thing coming on my side. Yeah, it's like a delay. So, so obviously it's our time to do the segment. So why don't you leave and come back, and then hopefully when we get back to you, you'll be all good. <laughs> Stacy says go up on the roof or something. <laughs> Put your tinfoil hat on. Do something. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take Lee out here. Hopefully we can hear him when he gets back. Good to see everybody this evening. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I hope, perhaps. There we go. <laughs> Time for our scores of the week. These are the things that you should be on the lookout for. All the good stuff that Craig and I sold this week. Boom. Um. Well, hey, this is one of my, <laughs> it's one of mine. It's a puzzle that I, I've got. And I've actually picked these up. They're really easy to spot because they're these triangle boxes. Wow. When we get back out there. Um, 
I did not check any of these. Uh, this actually sold, and I had five of these. Rick did not want me to list them. And for the life of me, for like a year, they've been sitting around. We've listed them, and now as of today, I think I've got one left. And they all have sold for like 30, 40, 50 bucks and more and not checked. So, so why didn't Rick want you to list them? Because they were so big, he didn't really want to think about shipping them. But then we oh, okay. out, I said, look, puzzles, lockdown, let's try. But yeah, uh, they're triangle boxes. There's some hay puzzles that can go for hundreds of dollars. All right. Very cool. So, hey. Hey, Vintage Route 66. Uh, this was actually a buck 99. So I always look for really funky wallpaper when I'm out at thrift stores. This was something I got obviously before the thrift stores closed down. It was actually a, a sealed roll that had a rip on the end. And I asked on my Tuesday show, the hall pass to the group, what do you think I should do? Should I keep it in the roll, but you don't get to see the whole panel or do I open the roll? The decision actually by the group was don't open it up. And we decided that, you know what? We wanted to make sure people could see the repeat on the pattern. And a buck eighty, a buck ninety nine, and flipped it for forty eight bucks plus shipping, plus like fifteen dollars shipping on this. Nice. Took, it, took about three weeks to sell. Not very long to sell at all. That's so right. always go for Route fifty six stuff. This was uh, a score that Rick found at the uh, basement of an estate sale back in uh, November or December. It was I think a dollar, and it was fifty percent off day, which you know he's notorious for finding things. This was in a middle of a box. It's a 1960s Hallmark paper dress. So it's an actual dress. It was never out of the baggie. Um, and we listed it before Christmas, sure that it would sell before Christmas. And it didn't. And it ended up selling when we threw an offer out on that for 75 bucks in the second week of lockdown. So somebody in the middle of end of March decided they needed a Christmas dress. For my 75 mom, bucks. My mom is throwing the gauntlet down. She said, uh, big, you call that big? <laughs> 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 yeah, you guys thought, thought that was big. Come on now. Hey, now, these uh, are these the kind you put inside of you? No, I have no idea. <laughs> this, is, this is one of my baggy wall hauls. And it was literally the day before everything sort of shut down up here. I walked through a, a, a Valley Village. This was on the wall in a bag. For $2.99, I saw it's in a box. I don't know what it is. I quickly looked up Magboy and saw that they were selling for between $30 and $85. Bucks. So I was thinking it, those are Benoit balls. So it, they're actually it's a there's a massage ball. Yeah. You basically hold it and massage yeah, with that, it. That company makes good massagers that everyone wants. And it sold in 30 minutes. Rick was mad. He said I didn't sell it listed high enough. And I said, look, we paid three bucks Canadian. The fact that I could flip it for 45 bucks plus shipping in less than 30 minutes, I'm happy. So, Heck yeah. All right. Now, not, this my, is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> not my biggest sale, but man, when you have a, a sublimation Ryan Seacrest t shirt, you got to share it when you sell it. <laughs> Someone loves their Seacrest to buy this shirt. So, that went out this week. Oh, you know what? Dang. I meant to say this when I was doing the tease earlier. I'm seeing a lot of people talk, some in the thrifting board, maybe a little bit in craft, but a lot of other groups that things are selling, but they're claiming no clothes to sell it. And tonight, all four of my scores are just to disprove that myth. So we start with a $30 Seacrest. And then how fabulous is this dress? This is, uh, yeah. Well, it ain't made of paper. Nope. <laughs> But, uh, it is a servant of Florida, and uh, away it goes. So we've got a secret shirt, this nice vintage, uh, making some uh, pies in the kitchen housewife. That, that is funky. That is really funky. Then, then we have this $100 uh, 49ers Levi's line jacket that I picked up for 28 bucks. Now, I probably could have held out for more, but I here's my thought process in this one, Craig. I got an offer of 100 bucks. We might not see sports again this year. Yeah, and it's now warm. So who's looking for a lined jacket right now? And I'm thinking, okay, burn the ham, you know, kind of thing. Like I paid 28, someone's offering me a hundred. I think I'll let this one go. It's a good profit. It was a quick profit, and uh, I thought just in case we don't have football, maybe no one cares the rest of the year. No, and that, just like the Magball ma massages, it's one of those things. It's like you're looking at something and going, "What am I going to flip on this? I can hold and wait and hope, or I can flip and make some money." So. Yep. All right. I'd so, to make money. Seacrest, 
50s housewife, sports fan, and the top. Boom. $500 Nirvana shirt. I know it says $699. $99. That's what I was asking, but I took a best offer of $500 and it has holes and it has stains. And the buyer said, Oh my God, I love the shirt when he got it. So if you don't think clothes are selling, or if you don't think clothes with holes are selling, or if you don't think you should go through your old rock and roll t shirts, you're missing out. And uh, here's the holes. Look at this. Now, of course, to a Nirvana, a rare Nirvana shirt, holes add to it, not detract from it. Holes in your paper dress would be shitty. Yeah. <laughs> and my concert t-shirts from when I was a young and really, I don't know how many people really want my Toto shirt. <laughs> and then, you know, when you find, uh, when you find rare shirts, I had to do a little research. There was two versions of this shirt. I actually got into a couple I'd say heated discussion with people saying that this was a bootleg. I'm like, no one was bootlegging uh, a shirt in the 90s. Here's what happened. This is the actual cover to Two Virgins by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. That is John and Yoko. But it's the two faces of the guys who owned... Um, oh, geez. Getting old sucks, man. You draw blanks. Uh, the the sound, the sound uh, record label they were on before the big one. Uh, begins with an S. <laughs> Someone... <laughs> Nirvana. No. So th this was their record label had honchos and they hated them. So this was like a slam at them, but they got the last laugh because they re-released the shirt with the record label on it. So, oh, okay. So yeah, so I found this in Buffalo Exchange for 32 bucks and sold it. Sub Pop, thank you. Sold for $500. Wow. Wow. Woo thank you, Sub Pop. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Stacey. Man, getting old socks when you draw blanks like that. All right. Now it's time for, oops, the wrong sound effect. Time for our CD and cassette scores of the week. And we always kick it off with flipping cassettes. And look who's, oops, well, somewhere in here you have one. Well, maybe it's there. Yeah, I just thought it's one of those things Jason says is you can find these things. And this is probably 50 cents that I paid for this Ghostbusters cassette. And it flipped for 14 bucks plus shipping. So again, it's like, when you find cassettes, even in the thrift stores, they're usually on the cheapest end of the thrift store aisle. And Jason's always saying soundtracks are can be really good. And I'm happy with a fifteen dollar flip on a fifty cent item. Those were. I think Nay was prompting me because she likes. I always say I love thrifting, uh, sourcing at Buffalo Exchange for thirty two dollars. Now, little fun side fact: in case you don't know about the uh, Ghostbusters theme song, he ripped off the music right from "I Want a New Drug" by Huey Lewis in the News. And he lost. So majority of the proceeds from this millions and millions that sold went right to Huey Lewis. There you go. There's your little fun fact of the day, kids. All right. So here are my cassette sales. I sold Missy Misdemeanor Super Duper Fly. Uh, I paid $1, sold it for $15. Uh, Sweat into the Oldies, the Vandals. I paid 3 bucks and sold it for $15. And Green Day, I did pay 9 bucks for this uh, Nimrod, but I did sell for 20 knowing I would at least double my price. And when you're flipping music, you know, doubling is not a bad thing. I know we like to have bigger margins on other things, but music is so quick to list that uh, uh, doubling it is good. I mean, yeah. of course, of course, I would love a $500 CD every day, but I'll take 20 bucks on a cassette. And speaking of CDs, now it's time for flipping CDs. Now, I didn't have any $200 ones this week, but I had a good menagerie. Speaking of Christmas, Craig, I listed Christmas Cro Christopher Cross Christmas before Christmas, and I had two of them. Neither sold, but someone in the middle of a worldwide pandemic in April said, you know what I need? A Christopher Cross Christmas CD. Try Say that three times fast. Christopher Cross Christmas. What are, why are you handing me that? Oh, Canadian. Oh, that's right. Christopher Cross has got the COVID. So maybe that's why. Maybe people are planning ahead. Who knows? Uh, they had a Prince special on TV uh, two nights ago. Wasn't all that good. However, I did sell the soundtrack to the movie Girl 6 uh, from Spike Lee. And the songs are by Prince. And the thing that's ab about this, the song, uh, Darling, um, Erotic City is not in a lot of places. It's very hard to find. But this is one of the CDs that Erotic City is on. I did pay 10 bucks, Sold it for $25. And this is the, I guess it went out of print. I didn't even know it went out of print. This is the co-CD by uh, Metallica and Lou Reed called Lulu. Picked it up for 10 bucks and sold it for $40. And 
And Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy himself, I have flipped this CD at least 20 times. I did pay 15, but I know it flips for more, and I got $40 for it, so I was very happy. And uh, this was listed, uh, so funny thing about this one, I wrote the listing up seven months ago and forgot to put the pictures and actually launched the listing. So I'm like, dummy, I put the pictures in, I launched it, and it sold it like an hour later. So this has been waiting to give me $61 for like eight months. And that is not all, because at this same time, we also talk about <laughs> Stacy's Budget Bin Scores. Ba-doop. And uh, only had one this week, but it's a doozy. She picked up this yogi -Oh soundtrack for $2, and we sold it for $31. So good job, Stacy. Yoo-hoo. It's surprising to see some of the stuff that Stacy's finding in the budget bins that like weren't picked up by somebody else who's even looking around because I would have looked at that UGO outside of a budget bin because you've always talked about like soundtracks for video games, soundtracks for those are all things that I'm always trying to keep my eyes open for. So good yeah. call, Stacy. Stacey. It, uh, it, it's amazing the stuff we pull out the budget bins all the time. That's why we decided to add this segment because every week I'm like, oh, here's another one of your dollars. Here's another one of your $2 ones. And so once we kind of discovered that, and, and we didn't set out to say, hey, Stace, you go do the budget bin. She just started digging through them, and we've gotten so much success out of it. That's our jam. Yeah. Right. Baby. right. <laughs> All right. But not everything can be winners. Now time flight. for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. What'd you say, funny boy? It was a long flush. <laughs> the big dud. This is a dud for one reason, and it's because somebody actually, we sold it. We had it listed for a very short time, um, but it was malware, and the person bought it. Then after they bought it, literally like minutes before we were about to drop it off at the post office, they sent a message going, what color blue is this? If it's not the right color blue, I need, I'm going to re return it. So I need to know what color blue it is. And I sent them a message back saying, unfortunately, blue is relatively subjective. You could be colorblind. Your calibration on your computer could be different than mine. So I don't know if you really want this to come to you because I can't tell you what blue it is. I don't know what you're seeing. So they canceled it. So it was like, I went, it's a dud because it's something where the thing that we always were, hate is when a buyer buys something and then decides to ask the questions afterwards. Yep. And then it becomes a sold item that shows up in eBay solds now as well. So you can't all of a sudden jack the prices easily. It's like, so it just was a pain in the butt sale. <laughs> still, still a dud. It only costs a Yes, maybe I should rename it the pain in the butt sale. <laughs> uh, these jeans just sat for a really, really, really long time. Um, they cost, I think it was $12.99, and we they did not sell for $39. They actually sold for $25. And it but it took ages and ages for them to sell. And um being I think Rick grabbed them because they were Marie Francois Gibot. And so it was just like grab those because they're Gibot. And it didn't really we didn't think about researching and we didn't think about anything on them. We had them up for, I think, a year or two before wow. they even went. So it was just one of those things that it's. it just depends who's surfing, what they're seeing. But sometimes things that you think could be automatic wins, eh, not so much. And the funny thing is I, I, I've sold that kind of that, that, that style a bazillion times. I usually don't have them last too long. But maybe we're, we've gotten to the point where everyone who wanted one has found it. Yeah. Oh, I just got an offer on a cassette. All right. I thought this was so cool. For the like Star Wars nerd in me, uh, this is like a 1960s, you know, thing you'd pick up at a place like, you know, uh, Spencer Gifts. Or yeah, Spencer Gifts. Of the uh, 60s or 70s. Yeah. It's a spaceship soap and it's, you know, Star Bar. So definitely a play on Star Wars. And I finally sold it for $9.99 free shipping. And I, I've had it for years. So I was like, okay, okay. I think I maybe lost a buck but i turned it into a little bit of cash so the back of that's so cool too like i would oh, just I play that with like my other star wars stuff now this is a dud because no one cared it's a uh, doctor who something or other i don't know doctor who well uh but where it might be a more of a dud coming back to uh bite me in the butt as i was shipping it out the condition wasn't as 
good as my assistant wrote it up to be. And I don't think it's my current assistant. So I still sent it. If they say a peep, I'll be like, yeah, here's your one. Here's your whole $10 back. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, no, that was a bad one all the way around. All right. Now it's time for where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not selling internationally, you are giving up $7.3 billion with a B potential customers. <laughs> we have actually got new graphics. Yay. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, what is the? We've actually stopped selling internationally from Canada. Um, part of the reason being that Canada Post has actually had over 250 countries they have said no shipping is allowed to. Um, and so we've just been challenged with the shutdown. So we've taken on our new listings, we've taken international off. So the closest I could get to international was something international for Jason, which is something from Canada. And since I'm here rep repping Canada, we put this Hooters booty shorts up and they sold literally in 15 minutes to somebody 15 minutes away. <laughs> It's lit down the street. Like I could have driven them and I it, I didn't. He paid like seven bucks for them to be shipped to them. So, uh, and I got these for uh, a Peggy quarter um, <laughs> when I was. <laughs> Hold on. I'll give you a Peggy quarter. A pe I got these for a Peggy quarter. There we go. I think they sold. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think they sold for around 20, 25 bucks. So, uh, but they literally went like across the street practically. All right, let me listen to. Oh, did I close? Hang on, let me listen. I'll pronounce this again. Wachen Hagen. I just listened to it. So, someone, someone needed the blues rock boy from Texas and Wachen Hagen, Netherlands this week. And I've always said that music is the universal language. It doesn't matter where you live, that you will find Stevie Ray Vaughan fans everywhere. I, I listened to this and it sold in like three hours to the Netherlands. So, Get your stuff listed, especially music. I'm sorry, what did Angela say? Oh, Angelique. Angelique. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right. Right. <laughs> I like it. All right, Craig, let's talk. Uh, uh, let's talk. Uh, compare, contrast these two listings here. This is the Vor this is the mug from the Vortex in Atlanta. It's a great burger joint. Uh, they happen to sell a tiki mug, even though they're not tiki at all. And uh, this one sold for $38. In the same week, this one sold for $82. Now, let's discuss reasons why. There is actually three. So let's go back to this one. What do you think the first thing is? Well, strangely enough, one of the first things that I look at on that is the, the white background actually makes that mug look pretty bad. Yeah, and, and the, everybody says, what's the green? That's the shadow of the yeah, mug. It, yeah, it, was, it wasn't completely cleaned up. So it yeah. actually, yeah, it looks like there's something, a lump behind it. So, and surprisingly, like the other photo is really, to me, what I'd normally be expecting on an Etsy. Right. So right? with the big course, background and everything. Of course, this one's mine. <laughs> so here's the three points to this. Uh, it, uh, you can't make more money if you don't ask for more money. This person mm -hmm. only asked for 42 and sold it for 38. I asked for eight, uh, I asked for a hundred and I got 82, but my picture's better. And it comes with a fun little umbrella that they obviously didn't pick up or didn't mention they have. So all those things, and you might be thinking, well, why in the why in the world uh, are we talking about this just kind of in the middle of the show? Well, <laughs> you have got to be shipping me because here's the real problem, Craig. They only ship to the United States. And guess where mine's going? Hong oh. Kong. Off to Hong Kong. That's actually, Paul just said something else. If you go back, they yeah. actually missed the I from Mantiki. Yeah, they also spelled the brand wrong. So if yeah. you were searching, brand searching for that, you wouldn't even get it. It wouldn't even show up, but. Yep. So here's the deal. That's why I put this, I, I kind of wanted to say this yeah. before we got into the, the, the segment. Hong Kong, someone needed it now because I know all the angles to save money on shipping for what I charge for shipping, which wasn't a lot compared to everybody else. I made nine extra dollars on shipping. So actually, I sold this mug for ninety dollars, and 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 you know what? They only were asking forty two to begin with. So you cannot make more money if you don't ask for it, and you've yeah. got to ship worldwide. 
boom, I'm dropping the mic. Hang on. I am dropping the mic. There we go. Don't hurt myself. I won't on you. And again, part of the reason that we're we're uh, we have t stopped it is we're also because we represent Kraft and it's the Canadian group. There's a lot of people who don't have access to cross border shippers in any way, shape, or form. We can't use uh, pirate ship. We can't use anything like that. So if all that we have is Canada Post and they're saying here's 250 countries you cannot ship to, we won't even accept it. It's sort of like don't do take that off right now and add it back in later. But yeah, we try and sell around the world. Normally about 5% of our sales are around the world. Oh, I meant to bring this up. I got mine today. You know what mine are? I, I got uh, um, the month of March figures, 29.4%. Uh, wow. One third of my sales are international. Wow. Yeah. All right. What's your little uh, tip here, buddy? I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, there? I know. Okay, now, uh, I'm like, you got all these fancy new graphics. Debbie makes but, nice little graphics. Yeah, that's fair. Remember what you're doing. I'm trying to figure out what the graph, and now I realize. Oh, I remember what my tip is. My tip is when you actually have something you put on auction, as soon as you get a bid on it, pack it. One of the things that we notice is a lot of times you'll put we put auctions on, and we'll have like ten or fifteen or twenty auctions all ending on a Sunday night. And then if they all end on a Sunday night and you get 12 of them and get bids and all of a sudden Monday morning, you're going, ah, I got to pack all these things. But if you've got a bid already on your first day, then the next time you're doing some packing, just add that into the packing list and pack it up in advance. The only time we don't do that is if we've got a whole bunch of like-minded items. So we had a whole bunch of Dungeons and Dragons figures that were on last week. And we didn't pack it when we got a bid on one of the Dungeons and Dragons figures because somebody might buy more of the same thing but when it's a single item that you've got out there pack it i like that i, I never even thought of that but i like that i used to yell i yell at rick that's why <laughs> i like that i like that a lot yelling at rick <laughs> <laughs> your tip oh thank you now it's, time. <laughs> now it's time for our thrifty tips of the week when we're allowed to go sourcing little tips and tricks to help you out when you're out and about all right, let's see if you remember what this tip is. <laughs> I'm looking at this like one of those puzzles where I'm supposed to circle something or find something out. <laughs> when we're sourcing. Oh, what? This is, what is this again? Sourcing tip of the week. Oh, no, okay, now I got it. Oh, my God. It's like a big puzzle just for me, isn't it? It's so it much fun. Okay, my sourcing tip is, as you know right now, a lot of people are uh, in their own versions of lockdown or self-isolation. And you may actually have a bunch of neighbors who have been doing jigsaw puzzles. As a reseller, we know jigsaw puzzles are going really well on the net. So why not throw a little message around, take your walk of the day when no one's around, take it at one o'clock in the morning and pop something into their mailboxes that say, hey, if you've got any jigsaw puzzles, or in that case, any clothing, anything along those lines that you're thinking about getting rid of or donating, give us a call. We'll pick it all up and then resell it. There you go. I like it. All right. So uh, mine goes back to CDs yet again. As you can see, this was $1.99 at Savers. As, uh, also, you can see it's still sealed. It has the original $12.99 sticker on it. That's ludicrous. <laughs> you know, shh. Uh, I think I had a 20% off, so it was a buck sixty. Uh, I did sell for twelve dollars. Not the biggest sale, but if nothing else, when you're looking at the CDs, you know, because they're all stacked this way, look across the top. You'll see if you see the sticker on there, that means it's more than likely it's still sealed. So if nothing else, at least pull out the seals. Had this been used, it wouldn't have been worth it. Used the sales for like two bucks a buck. But sealed, I got twelve dollars. So I don't mind spending a buck sixty to turn into a quick twelve dollars because I listed this, Craig, and it sold in uh about 42 minutes. So that's about as long as it took me to figure out my tip based on yeah. your <laughs> now we got one last segment. <laughs> Let's see. Oh no. Let's see how, how Craig does with the online selling tip of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out. No matter if you're selling on eBay, Etsy, Thread Up, Ruby Lane, little tips and tricks for all of you. Can Debbie help me? <laughs> Right up and research photographs and inventory location. I'm gonna guess split the workload. Okay, that's a good. If you, <laughs> oh. you tell me, it's your tip. Oh, all right, this is okay. The first dog is me. The fat little round one. See the ball. That's me. 
The one side has hair on the side. That's good dog. Is, is this like you? No, well, kind of. Uh, that's more. How about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just that big pink guy uh, right there. Um, but yes, what we've done lately is we've realized that to try and get a little bit more done, we're splitting up some of the stuff. So if you're lucky enough to have a spouse who's going to help you a little bit while you're doing this, and it could be anything, figure out a way to actually split up what you're doing. So I'm doing up the writing up, the researching and everything like that. And Rick is actually then taking them when he gets a chance and doing a bunch of pictures. So we actually are getting a lot more things listed. We've had a couple of days where we've been easily hitting 40, 50, 60 items that have been listed and then photographed and ready to list by the end of the day. If your spouse doesn't do photographs or something like that, maybe they can just help you with inventory. Maybe they can help you do a little research. Maybe they can just help you with organizing. But see if you can involve them a little bit instead of having them sit down and watch the six seasons of Letter Kenny that I just finished watching. Yeah, that there you go. I, I like I like that tip. That's what my mom does. Uh, how do I reopen? Yeah, she's got Big Daddy doing like the packing yeah. when she helped. Yeah, so it's it's just something that we realized because Rick isn't has been do, digging too far into research, so it was taking him longer. And I was like processing things, but I'm too I'm not great with photos, so it just happened to work out that we're doing stuff this way. And you can see he's actually commenting in the comments over there too, as Two Dogs Digs. So if you see his comments, uh, all right. So here's mine, and uh, I got little notes here. There's my little notes. So no, you, can't have, you can't look at notes. You made me try and figure that out. You figure uh, out. <laughs> so here's my notes. So uh, I sold this lot of ZZ Top LPs. Now they all would have sold by themselves. And I figured out what they would sell for by themselves. And, and this is on average, they would have sold for $95. Okay. Yet I sold them for as a group for 107. One listing, not uh, three, six, not eight listings and quick. Again, it was up for about a day when it sold. And so sometimes you got to look at your stuff and go, can I get about as much money or maybe a smidge more or even a smidge less if I turn this into one listing as opposed to eight? That'll save you some time because I made like $10 more and I only had to do one listing. Yay. Well, even when you say like that, when you and I were, were chatted with Rick when you came on our show a few months back and it's like when you have CDs that aren't worth much, as opposed to tossing them, you can actually build your own rap groups or you can build sort of a group and then at least maybe get the 15, 20 bucks out of them versus donating them or trying to sell them in a garage sale so that you're actually bulking them up that way and you're not trying to do a bunch of three ninety nine dollars CD. Yep. yep. All right, before we get Lee in here, I want to thank everyone who took my class last Saturday. We had over a 1,000 people. That is an amazing class. We had a blast and... I have seen the successes already from those of you who took my hashtag stay home, hashtag make money web class. <clears throat> and we do have the follow-ups this week. So if you took my class, class last week and you haven't signed up for the follow-ups, head over to classwithjason.com and get signed up. We have a follow-up and a follow-up to the follow-up. Uh, the, the follow-up is this Saturday, tomorrow, uh, is this Friday? No. And two nights. <laughs> I'm like, what day is it today? Uh, <clears throat> Saturday night, eight o'clock East coast, uh, five o'clock on the West coast. We are going to be talking all the items I showed you. So I showed you 10 parts of your house, like over 50 different items that you probably have laying around to make money. Uh, if you found them, I'm going to now show you how to take pictures of each of those items, like the proper pictures. You don't need to take extras. And sometimes you don't take enough. I'm going to show you how the the bonus tip to list every single one of those things. There is something that people do that is wrong, and here's the right thing to do to help you sell it better than everybody else's, and how to ship them, including videos. I'm going to show you how to ship <clears throat> each item. And then on Tuesday, the follow-up to the follow-up is going to be a large Zoom hangout with all of you who sign up. And if that's when you want to bring your product, say, hey, I sold this mug. How do I ship it again? Or what? what's so special about this Snoop Dogg cassette? Tuesday, I'll answer any questions. Not that I won't answer them on Saturday, but Tuesday, I'll be able to see you. Now, you can still enjoy Tuesday and not be on if you don't want to, uh, but that's, that's your chance to ask me uh, anything. So get over to classwithjason.com, get signed up. It is only 19 bucks for these two, these two follow-ups, which are going to be about uh, two and a half, three hours. So, so cheap. So head over to classwithjason.com and get signed up now. Those of you in the Secret Beach, the Beachcomber Store Review tomorrow night is going to be Gary Hurtle. 
And uh, we've been doing, we've had awesome store reviews. Everyone who has tuned in uh, to the store reviews have seen things that they're doing wrong in their store and went and fixed them. So by the time I do the last store review in the Secret Beach, I expect that person to be perfect because <laughs> they've caught up on everybody else. This week, my mom and I have a fun two-parter. We did have a 50% off sale last Sunday. A lot of you have, have had. We have a post in the group about them. I've bought three things from the 50% off sale so far, and I have sold a bunch of stuff. So we're going to catch up with my mom. How'd she do in her 50% off? How'd everyone else do? And Craig, you'll love this. <laughs> you'll really love this. The reason the, the year 2016 is there, mom found a tub of clothes from 20 that have 2016 uh, uh, um, uh, thrift store tags on them. Yay! <laughs> so she hasn't seen them in four years. So it's going to be like the most awesome unboxing because are they still relevant? Are they still hot? Did they go up in worth? Did they go down in worth? Uh, well, just, yeah, but, well, that's what we're, that's what our Tuesday like hall pass was on yep. two like digs. It was us going through stuff and finding like Rick had found that Burberry sweater that was a four hundred dollar sweater sitting in a box that we bought two years ago, and he still hasn't listed it two days later. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna see what mom's got hiding. And then next week, oh, talk about talk about an amazing story. Natalie was able to adopt her child based on the money she made on eBay. So she was able to grow her family directly thanks to eBay. So we're going to hear Natalie's story next week. It's going to be an amazing story. So tune in next week, 8 o'clock East Coast, 5 o'clock West Coast, same place, same time, same channel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that is the wrong sound effect yet again tonight. Let's try the doorbell. Hey, everybody. It is Lee Graham. Hey, Lee. Hey. Oh, my gosh. Yay. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I am well. I am well. I've almost finished my whole drink just <laughs> listening to Tiki yeah, Talk. And, the show is definitely yeah. a two-drink minimum. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I um, I might have to drink this twice then. I'm not well, you're sure. sounding really clear now, though. You're sounding really clear yeah, now. I swapped phones. We had some technical, but we're good. We're, we're back on track. So here I am. So hey. here you are. <laughs> All right, so here's the reason I wanted to have Leon, and then Craig and I were talking. Craig's like, "Hey, if you are want me to co-host again, I'm like, ooh, perfect." So you know, 25 years ago, the world seemed like a big place, and then when online selling started, I started shipping internationally right away. And over the years, it has become easier and easier to ship internationally. The global postal system as a whole actually works very, very well. And so Lee lived and grew up in Australia, now lives in uh, the Garden State, as we call New Jersey. And Craig lives in Canada, has sold on Canada, C uh, Canada CA, uh, eBay.ca, and now sells on eBay.com. So I kind of wanted to talk about uh, it, the differences between the countries. And then since we have two foreigners on the show, uh, wh what people are looking for in other countries from those of us in the United States, because here is what's nutty. The amount of people that are afraid to ship internationally is mind-boggling at this point. Because at this point, <clears throat> you just spit out the label like, like, look, if you can ship to Maine, you can ship to Spain. The label to, to Augusta, Maine ships out as the same to Barcelona, Spain. Just spits out your computer. Super easy. Super duper easy. So, so let's back up to Lee. And I have a little fun thing for Lee. Hold on. Let me put the... Lee, what's your favorite band? Kiss. Ta-da! <laughs> Look out. And even better, hang on. I got something even more special. I'm going to make Lee the whole thing. And there we go. <laughs> See the fun you can have with little things like this. And then I'll put Craig on. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, let me get rid of that. Whoops. And... So when, uh, so Lee, how old are you? Uh, 40 something. All right. So, so you're probably like me. You discovered kiss when you were a young lad and you were just transfixed. Yeah. I was, uh, an eighties. Uh, I jumped on the kiss train about, you know, 1980. So they already had the makeup off. Um, you know, it was all big hair and, um, you know, Bon Jovi and poison and kiss. So I jumped on them and has been a massive fan ever since have seen them. Most times they've come to Australia, but, um, 
the last few years has been rough. So they've kind of, I've been in the wrong part of the world every time they're about to show up. So, and then Australia came, Paul got sick and um, COVID hit. So I'm, I think no one wants me to see them again. I think someone's against me, but uh, you know, hopefully 2021, they'll be in, you know, Madison Square Garden somewhere. But, um, you know, fingers are crossed. You know what? I would actually meet you there. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, I mean, we do that. Hey, I would Craig, go, Craig go out as I came in, you know. Have you ever seen Kiss, Craig? Um, no. Well, New, York. New York, let's meet 2021. Yeah, I uh, the one thing I blew when I was a kid, you know, it's weird what you remember as a child. And I got into Kiss um, when I was like nine years old. And I was remember watching a special on TV and they, they had the set where uh, Peter Chris's drum kit was on the, the tank. And my uncle, who was my godfather, who has since passed on, but he was the one that introduced me to concerts. He took me to a ton. For whatever weird reason, he was going to take me to that show, and I didn't go. Like, I, I, I don't know if I was afraid <laughs> or just like, I don't want to see it live, but I could have seen it the early days, uh, and uh, I, I passed for whatever weird reason. So I'm forever like, ugh, stupid me. I do remember Kiss animated in a cartoon when I was younger. I think it was a Scooby-Doo cartoon. And did you see the greatest movie of all time, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? Yes, uh, that. And I have, I, I actually still do because I was a Marvel comic collector. I still have my um, Kiss Marvel comic that was made with Kiss, printed in Kiss blood. Yep, Gene's blood. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So so you're, you're a little kid. You're big into Kiss. And uh, oh, no. Angela threw away her shirt. Oh, no. Angela threw away money. So uh, when did you uh, fall in love with the United States? And that's for both of you, because um, we know you both love us. I, uh, I mean, everything. I mean, Australia is the, all the entertainment is from the States. Like it's, it was back, we only had a few Australian, back in the day, we only had a few Australian type shows. And keep in mind, we, we had like three channels up until maybe the 90s. So, I mean, it was all American shows. So, obviously, every, you know, everyone had a fascination with it. No one in my age group had ever gone. So, you know, I think everyone kind of has a running knowledge of the States back in Australia. Um, and I managed to get over to L.A. in 2000, 2000, actually. And it was just, it blew my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around Disneyland. I thought that was just crazy. When someone explains to you that there is a, um, you know, like a, a cars ride or, or like some town that is actually, you are encapsulated within the, you know, the animated, whatever it's, you, you can't fathom that because we don't have that. So to go in there and be in the middle of it, it was just mind blowing. So I think ever since then, there's always been that, that inkling to get back. And I didn't get back till another 14 years after that. And now, it's, and now it's 2020, and here you are. Welcome. Well, I got back. I got back in 2014, um, and I it was actually just before I was became conscious of uh, you, and I was actually in Vegas for a while, and I managed to um, go to the you know the porn stars shop, you know, because everyone wanted to see Chum Lee. Um, <laughs> you know, everyone wanted to see what was going on there. Um, and then, you know, I hit all the Count's Customs and uh, Rick's Restoration, you know, and all the stuff from that, if you know, just from the shows that we were, get, we were getting. And, uh, you know, Vegas is a completely new beast. You know, it's almost, it's almost like the evil twin of L.A. I mean, you can, you can go to L.A. <laughs> and it's all fine and it's, great, it's dandy, but you can go to Vegas and you can be, and I've said it before, you can be dead in 12 months if you're lucky. You know, you can easily wipe yourself out and, you know. That was that was 2018 story. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, I've been like twice, and then in the last few years, I've been backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, trying to make this massive move. I think I met you, Lee, uh, 2018 ABA Open. I think that was the yeah. first time that we met. Yeah, and I remember snippets of it. Trust me, I, I had <laughs> snippets of many people that I met at. When I got back, because I was there for two weeks, and when I got back to Australia, I was still getting messages from um, my mind. I think it was Trader John 
sent me a thing just to ask if I was still alive. You know, and I was getting messages like that for weeks after I got back. So, you know. All right. Hey, Lee, can you move a little closer to your phone or who's our phone you're on? Because the problem is Craig is very loud. I'm guessing I'm probably loud. I can turn me down, though. Uh, but Lee is very soft, and, and Lee is not soft. Okay. Is that better? No, not really. That's weird. That's crazy. So, you know, sometimes technology is like, meh, screw you, Jay. So what, what can you do? So what uh, So what drove you, what, what brought you to the States to to make the move, other than um, uh, your love of uh, chumling? <laughs> oh, look, I, I, look I've... I went through a very big divorce um, and it was one of those things where, you know, if anyone's ever gone through it, you know, the isolation that it can, that it gives you. And, and I lost, you know, everything. And I mean, look, just, just to kind of rewind that a little bit in 2015, I'm sitting in my living room and I'm watching A&E, which was, I don't know what channel it was back home and a little show thrift hunters came on. So, what i'm watching What's that, that show? i don't know who was in it some guy anyway so i was I'm, I'm i'm watching this show and it just i mean i've been doing ebay just not in the same type of not in the same league you know it was just one of those hobbies i got a few extra dollars so i managed to take you know what you were doing at that point and i built on it and i changed formats and i did this and i did that and i tried things and i had success and different things and by 2000 I'm going to say 16, 17, um, that business in two years, that business had built up to the point where a bank was going to lend me 1.3 million to buy, um, to buy a piece of land and put a home on it. And I mean, not to say that it was just the eBay alone, but we were working, but we had no way of affording that. But I mean, the, the eBay business on top, um, you know, that was where we were at. And a 12 months it was all over, you know, um, I'd lost my family. Um, and I was basically sitting, uh, I was in between homes. Um, I didn't really have anywhere to sleep. I didn't have any place, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, I did the 2018, uh, eBay open. And I think that was like, I'd never met so many cool people that were, um, you know, and I've been speaking to them in Australia. So I kind of had a bit of a knowledge of them getting over there. And, and what's funny, is that when I got off that plane, like I had taken, I'd taken a Valium one, which I can remember to sleep, to come over. And then I'd forgotten I'd taken it. So I took another one and then someone gave me a drink and then I forgot that I did that and I took another one. So I'd taken three on the plane, gotten to LA, missed my connection, gone to the bar, thought, oh, I should take a Valium so I can sleep because I hadn't slept. By the time I hit Vegas, I was wide awake, got in a cab, I harassed some other youtuber guy which i'd seen out there drunkenly oh, you know got in the first person i saw was stacy and it was almost like i was um it was funny because like i know stacy from only i had only known her from the video so to see stacy was like seeing an old friend and it was i was sold that was that was it that was the that was the the point where i was all in it was just a matter of trying to figure out how to get here and on what i had which was basically the money that was in my bank account which wasn't a lot <laughs> so it's a hell of a trip now now to bring everything full circle you uh you were kind of inspired by my tv show thrift hunters and that one time when i got to work with mini kiss there we go that's right from thrift hunters <laughs> i totally hadn't thought about getting this uh, picture ready but yeah and I've told the story before, but but I'll tell it again. I bought these giant Kiss dolls in uh, New England, and we were trying to think of a fun thing to do with them on the selling end of the segment. And there was there was a Kiss Mini golf course here in Vegas, and I said we should take them to the Kiss Mini golf course, see if they want to buy them and put them on display. All my producer heard was the, was the words Kiss and Mini, and so this day when I show for work, she goes, "Oh yeah, we're filming with Mini Kiss today." She goes, "Great idea." I go. What? I didn't have that idea. She goes, yes, you did. I go, I said we should go play Kiss Mini Golf. I didn't say hire Mini Kiss. <laughs> and there's Mini Kiss. So, yeah, I never, I never thought I'd be spending the day sitting with uh, uh, Tiny Peter Chris, but it was a fun day at work. <laughs> yeah, well, I never got to see it, but uh, yeah, Vegas solidified what I wanted to do, you know, as far as make that make that jump. All right, so let's talk about uh, buying in, in different countries. So, Craig, when um, 
when did you first start buying on eBay? Uh, probably 24 years ago. Uh, we we started, we our eBay account opened basically months with, after it had opened. We'd already been selling on spots like Rep Collector Dolls and buying stuff like that. And we were big uh, Barbie and TV pop culture collectors. So I started looking there and buying stuff way, way back there in, in the U.S., yeah. So, was there what what U.S. things were you like? I can't get this in Canada, but I can pick it up on eBay. Uh, eBay dot com. I'm a huge TV fan, fanatic, and behind me you can see there's this little thing here and this one over here. And what they are is these are, I and mean, you can't couldn't get these anywhere. These are the original tickets for the game shows and things for audience <laughs> participation. In like, and people would find these things in their like drawers yeah and i was like oh my god that's password that's like love americans anything that was sunny and share carol burnett so this was one of the big things that i was like a major like oh my god this is something in the u.s i've watched these tv shows i can actually pretend that i was in line to see them and then yeah. i collect them and so i have this uh oh how'd you get muted your hands were. How'd you get muted, Craig? There. When did I mute myself? In the middle. I don't of know. But I was going to say. So, see, Craig didn't know that question was coming, and that again proven to everybody. Hopefully, that's watching that. If you're not offered international shipping, you'll never know that the junk pieces of cardboard in your junk drawer are going to go to a, a customer in Canada because that's what he wants. Oh yeah. But he doesn't find those in Canada. And, and then my same question to you, Lee, is what were you buying? Uh, 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 when you were living in Australia that you couldn't find in Australia that you were finding on ebay.com? Um, before recent years, I mean, probably back in the mid-20-teens, we, I mean, do you remember when a movie would come out or a band would release, mostly a film, but when a movie would come out and America would get it and then another country would get it and then you would find that it would scatter throughout. Now they do these big worldwide releases. We... We would get a movie, no word of a lie, we would get a movie 12 months after the U.S. had gotten it. <laughs> so this is really a little bit pre-downloading, like downloading, not long after, not, not long before that kicked in. But like we would go to eBay, uh, Amazon, and we'd be picking up movies 12 months before they even came out to our cinema. And, you know, that's, that's what personally I was buying. Um, I knew... Selling back overseas, um, the American dollar was always so strong. So, you know, we had times when we were buying 50 cents American. So Americans were buying off us because, you know, it was so cheap. And and we could ship it to America for nine or ten bucks, shipping like a CD or a, or a video. Um, so it was, it was cheap to do commerce backwards and forwards. But um, for me, it was more... Just and, and again, Australia didn't pick up things like bands wouldn't tour Australia. It was too far to go. Um, you know, just things that we would get late, different versions of things. So pretty much everything in the end. But, um, <laughs> just everything until, I needed. Yeah, it wasn't until later on that, you know, uh, Australia kind of picked it up and I don't know what changed. I guess the internet changed it. Uh, streaming services, I don't know. But suddenly everyone was getting everything at the same time. And that's so weird. That's one. That you say, that's your answer because living in Las Vegas, just about the time we moved here, bands wouldn't stop here because Las Vegas was seen as this is where you're going. Your career is on the downswing. Yeah. And then somebody, I wish we could pinpoint it one day. Some band said, "Wait a minute, we're driving from Phoenix to LA on this tour, and we're skipping the city that's open all night and it has cocaine and whores. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> Why aren't we skipping the party city?" And then, boom, different story. But when we first started traveling here as tourists, there wasn't, you know, Britney Spears and, and Prince weren't doing residencies. It was, you know, barely Wayne Newton still. And so same deal. Like I, I moved to a city where people didn't get the music. And, and so I, I understand that, that you're like, I got to go online and buy it. All right. So let's talk about selling, though. Let's talk about eBay Australia. Is there a great difference uh, in terms of like listing and stuff between eBay.au, uh, right? Is that Australia AU? Yep. And eBay.com. Yeah. I mean, just the buyers, like everyone's more savvy. And I mean, I, I, I don't want to blanket statement that and say everyone's different and whatever, but like, okay, 
back before I came here, we were buying um, things like um, Nintendo Wii's um, video games and stuff. And people would put a value on a video game uh, to the point where if my kid doesn't play it, it's almost worthless to me. Now, that's that's that would be a majority of people that we would buy. So here, if I want to go buy the same video game, it's almost like everyone knows that this is worth something. <laughs> I'm not going to give it to you so you can sell it. You rather buy it for yourself or you're not going to have it. So the profit line's different. So well, what it does is it makes things harder to do. So when I was selling CDs and I would sell, I, like, do you remember, Jason, back in... Um, when I went thrifting with you, okay, we, you took me to that CD store. Now, all I picked up was metal, metal, metal. And I would take that back and I had- Wait, you like heavy metal? metal? Shut up. <laughs> Who would have thought? So it was, it was I, I had that stuff gone in a, maybe a month and a half. I might've had a few sitting around, but other than that, majority was gone, right? You come here, you try that same maneuver and it just sits here because they're worth a dollar. Two, two bucks and I'm selling them back home for, for, you know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 20 bucks, because the version just, we just didn't get it or it was never released. So you're going to get it off Amazon and wait a week or two to get it, or you're going to go and pay me more and I'm going to ship it to you in three days. So, you know, it was basically, you know, it was scarcity. It was the supply and demand here. There is, you know, tons of supply tons of it and everyone sells the same thing so you got to try and find your your rhythm i guess and and that's really what i've found um coming over here and i mean back home i had my ebay i'd run that since to the early 2000s um and then when i come over here my partner's ebay i'm just kind of helping out because you know i'm uh i'm a uh waiting for everything to go through so you know it's it's not my business um, you know, and I'm just helping out, but the, the ideas that we had back in Australia. So, so it's a whole new, it's a whole new mentality. Like a different planet and we're slowly getting it back. But, you know, it's like then COVID hits, you need to eat. So <laughs> <laughs> it just changes it again. What do you do? Do you wait a month to sell something or do you lower the price and try and get a few bucks to get a sandwich, you know? So question, Lee, when yes. in Canada, we have .ca and we can also list on .com. Yeah. Did you ever list on .com even though you were in AU? Um, look, I, I heard about it and I tried it. And to me, it was just something stupid at the time where it was like, I've got to log into .com.au. And at that point, TurboLister was the thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. TurboLister, old school. <laughs> yeah. So you can upload in bulk and then you would have to go over to ebay.com and like, and then it was like list again. Like, do you list those again? And is my stuff, what happens if I sell one in the States and one here? I've got one. It was one of those things where I started doing it, saw that there was going to be a problem with it and then backed out of it. But I always offered international and I would find more times than not. I thought in my head, and I don't know if it was true or not, that that was how I sold overseas. I thought my stuff showed up overseas if they couldn't find what they were looking for in the next state over, you know, yep. that was how I looked at it. So I maybe lost business, who knows, but I didn't lose, sell two items that I didn't have. <laughs> you know, that well, was, I know that I think for us, process. for us, I think in the, <clears throat> probably in Australia is one of the three, biggest countries that we've ever been shipping to in the history of us selling on eBay. Can I ask um, you a question, Craig, about that? Do you find any delays in the shipping from Canada to Australia? Uh, Pre-COVID. Pre pre no, not, not so much. No more. Well, the only thing that we used to have, and this was always the challenge, was people asking us to send uh, surface mail. And even to Australian, it was like, I'm sorry, I can't send you surface mail because it's three to four to six months it could take to get to you. But the challenge became, and as you said, there's in Australia, there are people, for example, we used to deal a lot in uh, Barbie dolls, vintage Barbie dolls and GI Joes. And there'd be so many people that we'd meet from Australia who'd be like, the only place you can get those is to get them from people in, in, the, U, in the US or in Canada. So, yeah. but they didn't like the idea that they had to pay $25 shipping. 
on something, yeah. especially on smaller like items. If it was a higher value item, it never seemed to be a problem. But I often see that. So uh, I, I understand exactly when you're saying about Australia didn't get stuff because that's the reason that we were actually managing yeah. to sell some stuff to Australia was because it was like the, you, you couldn't get yeah. it anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Well, we found in reverse and I would sell mostly to the States. I would get a few Canada customers that would pop up and I would cringe every time because Canada had a different postal time. I could, I could get something to, to the States in seven days, 10, 10 working days at the most. Canada was a month, month and a piece because, and the way that it was explained to me through Australia Post was that we at the time didn't have direct flights from Sydney to Canada. I need to find out next time I fly to the States, I go in through Canada. But I didn't, they, they said, we don't do it. They, they ship to LA. And then from LA, it gets off, goes through customs, gets out of customs, then it ships to Canada, goes into Canada customs, out through Canada customs, and then I would be getting case after case after case of item not received, item not received, only to end them, obviously not in my favour because we were shipping airmail, airmail just didn't have tracking. Then then to say, oh, it showed up. And we started to notice a, a trend with, with everywhere else, I've shipped any, everywhere else in the world, Canada, Canada, is the only one, oh, and Russia. So, you, you know, this, <laughs> Canada and, yeah, the only ones I cringe at when I used to get them because of the time frame it would take to get. So, you know, uh, Angela said, as you can see on the screen, Australian buyers are always the most grateful for sellers that will ship to them. So let's talk about that for a quick moment because I actually have two graphics ready. This is graphic number one. So Craig needed an item, and the person lived in St. Paul, as you can see, and they didn't ship to Canada. So the item had to travel from St. Paul to Las Vegas, me, and then from Las Vegas, which it'll go to, to Toronto. And let me show you how tiny of an item it is. That's it. That's it. It weighs an ounce and a half. And they threw it in this envelope, which they could have thrown in the exact same envelope. Yeah, shipped it to Canada. Minnesota, which is basically Canada. Yeah, Minnesota is basically Canada anyway. <clears throat> Yay! No, and, and yeah, it's a it's a cord to a Teddy Ruxpin doll. That's it. And so that's crazy. Now here's what's even crazier because here's the deal: Craig needs this. Lee wanted, uh, you know, pop culture and rock and roll things in Australia, and you know, only a certain amount of us would ever ship there. So here's the other thing about Canada is my buddy, Chris. Oh, I closed the wrong thing. There we go. My buddy, Chris is a Tiki buddy. He lives up in Manitoba and no one that sells Tiki mugs on like eBay and Macari and stuff like that. Well, probably not Macari, but eBay and Etsy won't ship to Canada. So guess where they all come to me. And so then I have to repack them and ship him to him. And so he was just starting to get the boxes this week and he wanted to thank me, but it's crazy I mean, I have, I've already shipped him 30 mugs and I got like 30 more to go. And A, he buys way more mugs than I'll ever buy. But B, that's a crazy amount of people who won't ship to just Canada. Canada's yeah. the 51st state. It is not that hard. Well, and that's what I said. I even contacted that seller and said, this is a cord. You can throw it in a birthday card with a stamp on it. Oh, there's Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. And who, like, I don't care if it's in a birthday card with a stamp on it. You don't have to give me tracking. Just, like, don't make me pay to ship it to the States. And they, we have a U.S. address that we would normally ship to, but because the borders are closed, we can't pick up, and they're not accepting things right now. So, luckily, it was like, okay, and now Jason's just going to drop it back in an envelope and send it up to me with a stamp. Same so, kind of envelope, and I'll drop it back. It doesn't cost much. And that's the other thing, too, is you don't have to rape your international customers, I'm sure Lee and, and Craig have both gone through this where they were like, how much are you charging? Especially with those of us in the United States who can use pirate ship. That's the other thing. So Chris, most of the most of the mugs, people won't ship to Chris, but some will ship to Chris, but they're charging them 50 bucks when one mug really only costs about $24 to Canada. So why would you charge double? Make a couple bucks, pay for your peanuts, pay for your box, pay for your bubble wrap, but to double the price. Now, speaking of that, let's talk global shipping. Because here are the two countries that buy from the United States quite often that most buyers got educated quick and said, I ain't buying from no one using global shipping. Is that true? 
completely true. Yeah, I we do, we tell every U.S. person do not use global shipping. Use regular U.S. post to Canada post. It's ridiculous because for global shipping, it's literally. A, and Diana uh, made a comment there that somebody wanted like fifty three bucks for a DVD that they wanted to order. It's because it's going from them to eBay. From eBay's adding the shipping charges. They're adding the custom charges. They're adding like brokerage charges. And all of that stuff. And literally 95% of the things that arrive across the border, we never get charged duty on. Never. That's the thing. And, and I, think, I think Lee's going to have the same experience. How often did things like, because I've sent you stuff, did they get stuck in customs and you had to go pay for them? How often did that happen? Never. 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 I don't know what, the, I don't know what the, the total has to be to be up in, into it. And then they would say things like if it's stock, if it's merchandise, and then you could tick if it's a gift. You know what I mean? So every country is different in how much you can send. And then, I mean, we never knew that. We, we we sent some shoes to the UK back in Australia, and then the guy yells at us because he got charged uh, like some type of duty tax. And we're like, we didn't know. Like, we have no idea. That's not up to us to know that. I mean, that was my thinking, and he's upset because these – you know, fifty dollars shoes now have costed him seventy bucks. Yeah, I mean, but that that actually we we see that happen a lot. And one of the things that we've started trying to recommend to people is they see something that's going to like overseas is just when you send your invoice out or send a message, just going, just recognize that you could be charged VAT taxes and duty, and that's not our responsibility. Yeah. We don't sell enough. Like if we were selling thirty percent of our stuff, like Jason does, I don't know whether we do that because we sell one item every other week internationally, then it's okay to just send that little thing off, just reminding them. Because we have had people who have been like, I'm not paying for this. And then it they, it ends up coming back to you. Yeah. And yeah. dinged on the shipping, because you have to refund them the shipping to like Europe or the shipping to someplace. So yeah, that's, our, our threshold used to be 20 bucks. That's why. So it was like, if you bought something that was $21 and it's converted. So if you bought something that was $15 US, They'd convert it to 21 Canadian and then charge you $5 for handling fee, taxes on that duty. And all of a sudden you'd have like $25 to get to pick up something you bought for 15. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you're, if you're using global shipping, here are two customers that they, they were quickly educated. They, they realized that, okay, if I need a t-shirt and there's 10 people selling it, Jason isn't using global shipping. And I know his is going to be cheaper. For a t-shirt to Canada, I'll charge 17 bucks shipping. It's really only about 13 so I make a couple extra dollars. But that same t-shirt, there was someone using global shipping, is $35. So as an educated buyer, why would anyone spend double on shipping for the same product? You yeah. wouldn't. You wouldn't. So it's easy to ship uh, internationally on your own. I've done it for 20 years and uh, I never have any more problems internationally than I do domestically. Here's a prime example. This guy forgot to pay his duties. He, he knew he had to go pay him. He forgot. And it sat so long in his post office in Germany, it shipped back to me. And it got back to me. No problem. And he said, if it comes back, let me know. I'll pay for you to ship it again. I've messaged him. I'm still waiting, but okay. But it works. It, it very much works. So please ship internationally. If you don't know how to do it, it's super easy. But if you don't know, I'll, I'll hold your hand. I'm happy to do it because you... Uh, Today was my only day not shipping internationally in two straight weeks. Today today was a crummy day. I only shipped like six things. They were all small. But we all have off days. But yeah, every day this week and last week, international, every day. All right. Speaking of uh, selling stuff, let's talk about – Lee has an amazing story. Then we'll get to score some dogs. Then we'll call it, right? Let's talk about this Rocky book that you just sold because here's where we should all rethink auctions for one reason or another. So how much did you have this Rocky book listed for as a buy it now, Lee? Um, we had it for, uh, at, initially, I think we had it for about 10 to $15. And it sat there for a long, long time. We, we have had that book for a long, long time. Uh, we cross-listed it to Macari. Um, it was either on uh, offer up. Um, and, you know, the great thing with Macari is you promote, right? So it drops the price. And that thing had been down as low as 7 or $8. Could have been. It was somewhere in that ballpark. Anyway, we couldn't sell it. Couldn't sell it. And it, it was on there for months and months and months. And 
we need money quick because you know the we're we're running out of money. No one's working. Um, my partner's saying, look, we need to get everything out. Uh, so I take all this stock, which is just sitting there, which to me is dead. And Rocky scrapbook is just dead stock. It's sitting here. I'm sick and tired of looking at it. <laughs> Throw it on there for ninety nine cents. And um, at auction, two dollars, two dollars eighty postage. <laughs> okay, forgot about it before I knew it was at twelve bucks, and then it was just bang, bang, bang. It was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. But they could have picked it up for a, what a third of the price had they had <laughs> probably searched for it like a month ago. You know. So, so there you go. Could have had it for ten bucks at one point. You threw it at auction, and it was only good condition, thirty nine dollars. So. You know, I, I never usually use auctions, but this makes me think, all right, maybe, maybe on certain things I should see if, you know, especially now, maybe people are just going delirious. They're like, I want to bid on stuff. I want to do something. <laughs> I want a dumb Rocky book. But, you know, it's funny, like, I'm I'm now addicted. Like, you know how everyone's addicted to the cha-chings, right? I love it. I don't care how much I sell something for. If it's $2, if it's 20 bucks, as long as I hear that cha-ching, I'm happy. If I could put that cha-ching on a text or a message, something I would put it on for everything, right? So I wanted to hear it. So, but when you get a, like a a bid, it gives you that that eBay chime. So suddenly I've got thirty auctions going, and I'm just hearing these eBay chimes. It is fantastic. It is such a, a positive, I guess, experience to have. You didn't sell anything, and you've only made ninety nine cents. But man, to hear that eBay thing go off is like such a yes. It's sale. It's a sale, and then. <laughs> 99 cents and two dollars 80 shipping and that's if you remember to put shipping segway <laughs> <laughs> so i i i've fallen i've fallen in love oh, here we go this would be the same <laughs> I, fell, I fell in love with auctions until we sold this okay so you can go and put a um you can uh, do a comp on this they sell for about 10 to 15 bucks now it's not full but i thought i got it for like 50 cents or something and I was at an estate sale and we were sitting around and we thought, ah, screw it. We, it didn't sell for the 15 bucks that my partner had it up for. So I thought, well, what, what we'll do is, you know, we'll just drop it back in. And, you know, through one of these drunken nights, I sat there and I just said, 99 cents, 99 cents. Forgot to put shipping, free shipping. And I didn't just do that for one thing. I did it to about six things and took a bath on every single one of them. Oh my, so that, 99 cents free shipping. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah, that's how you give back to the community, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you do it. You come to me. Oh my. So you're giving to charity. Yo, Adrian, thank <laughs> God you sold for 39 bucks. <laughs> yeah, 99 cents. Where do you reckon I spent that? Not even on the bag. I had to buy a bag to put that in which was a dollar and uh you didn't want to take off the five dollar uh sticker out <laughs> nah what the hell i mean if i would have gotten who's gonna complain i mean you'd think they'd give me oh no no who knows gonna play but maybe they didn't bid as much you're like screw it, that guy paid five uh, trust me at this point when you when you're eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches which is a new thing to me too a dollar anything i didn't care what those photos were i was like just screw it photo stick it up there but the photo looked awesome you got to admit if you took the five dollar sticker off it that photo was like killer <laughs> uh stacy uh stacy has a question do you like yes. peanut butter and jelly more than vegemite yes yes <laughs> and every australian is just flicked off and giving you a thumbs down on this video but until you try it um it's a new experience it's a whole new world a whole new world all right, let's let's, uh, let's end on your scores because that's uh, always the best way to end. This is a uh, this is one hell of a remote control. That's a lot of <laughs> yeah. Buttons. So I don't even know what it, what it was. Like my partner goes to estate sales, and she just she's got a very good relationship with one of them in particular, and she just brings a bunch of stuff down. And eventually, we we just do it on like a Sunday, so it's like you know the end of it. I don't care, just take it. So we bring all this crap down and. The guy's like, you know, whatever, 10 bucks. All right. So I was like, fantastic. Not just for that, for a whole bunch of stuff. So we take it, shove it in the car, and it sits there for a long time. And I'm just going, you know what? It's probably worth something, five bucks, 10 bucks. I'll get my investment back. So we have a look at it. And sure enough, it's it, it sold for, um, the first one sold for like $80. Right. Jeez. So 
I'm like, this thing is golden. Have a look in the back. It looks great. I even retook all the photos and copied the exact photos that the other guy had sold it. You know what I mean? Just took the same ones, inside, outside, backwards, forwards, just shoved it up there. And two weeks, two weeks after I listed it, offers. And then I was like, you know what? I think, what, what did it sell for? 60 bucks? Free, 50 bucks. Free How much? 50, 50 with $5 shipping. You didn't really oh, lose yeah. it this time. So, but I'm like, how do you, like, how do you beat that? You know, like 50 bucks for something that we didn't even know if we paid a few cents for. Like, it was like, perfect. Just let it go. Like, that's cash. That's cash flow. And and that's what people like. You could have sat there and maybe had that for another month and maybe got 80 bucks for it. But when you're, when you're searching around for money, cash flow is king. I'll take it any day of the week. I like that tip. You know, it went, you know, I, 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 I often tell people hold out for the slow dime. Don't take the fast nickel, but more so I always tell people, you know, the medium seven and a half cents is good, but I manage it when you're in a pinch where you're like, I need that fast nickel. I need it. Oh, man. We're, we've been in a pinch for the last six months. So um, 50 bucks for something like that. Beautiful. All right. So now I'm pissed at you. Why wasn't this on his way to Las Vegas for my office? <laughs> you, do you like it? Do you not it's realize so my whole office turned into creepy clown town? Oh, uh, well, check this out. You'll love this story. I, I don't love the story. It's not coming here. Well, it was a good one. I stayed sale. Everyone, the person who, who who had this, it was in their kid's room. Kid hated it, would cry every time it, they would go in there. They just hated it. Father took it out, puts it in his thing, gets it out of the room. Everything's fine. The father is apparently, this is the story that we get told by the estate sale, that he's now having these awful dreams, right? Absolutely horrific dreams. Gets this thing in the, you know, Figures it's this stupid clown, moves it down into the basement, forgets about it. Everything's fine. That's what we got told. And then when it came to the estate sale, they brought this upstairs and it creeped out the staff so much that they went and threw it back in the basement again. <laughs> so we're like, beautiful. That's ours. That's ours. So it was half price day. I don't know what we got it for, $2.50 or something. Craig, and, Craig's palms are sweating right now. <laughs> it was such a cool thing. So we listed it as haunted because... <laughs> You know, and look, surprise, look, Craig! Look. I bought it for you. It's on your way to your house right now. <laughs> look, if anyone listening has a creepy clown lamp, that's the one thing I do not have yet in the office. I would love something like this, so please hook me up. Uh, All right, speaking of haunted, what's this craziness? Okay, so this was a story that came to us from. This was another estate sale. Um, the, I'm trying to think of the, um, what was the house? You remember what the house was? Bell house, some house up in North Jersey. Hill house. What is it? Yeah. No, no, it would have been cool if it was, the price would have gone up, but, um, it was, it was something that, uh, was found on the property of this old, like 1800s built home and people would leave religious significant things there because they had, they'd had heard about a lady who had lost a baby and a child that had died. And, and uh, the, the reports were that there was a woman that would pace around the grounds looking for their child. And so this here was found on the property. Hands up. I'll take that one every day of the week. So we grabbed that, sold in like two, three days. Beautiful. You've now got me curious as to how many things are listed with the word haunted. Well, that's on eBay. What, that was what I started to use. And I'm like, I, I plainly put in there, it was found on the grounds. The story was what was there. Um, you know, we don't think it's haunted, but there was a great key keyword. And, and yeah. straight away, Macari was like, like, like. So. I think I'll list this Prince CD later as haunted. Haunted, yeah. He's dead. He's, he's, he speaks through the music. Yeah, I would, I would do it. <laughs> now, the last thing, was this haunted too? Yes. Look at it. It's a mangy old thing. Well, you saw that photo that I sent you with my cat next to it? Yep. So it was just this cool thing. It was like it's Sesame Street. And I just comped it on the day and you know, it was just laying in the bottom of an old toy chest. It looked dirty and matted and you know, it was going for really high prices. So I figured this is a no brainer. Stuck it up there and off it went. Yeah. Just it's, it's... Sell. Just that is the that's Going back to it, that's what thrift hunters did. I mean, this is, you probably hear it a thousand times, but this was what it was. You show up, you find something that looks, you know, that you recognize or you don't, it looks old, and you would just comp it. That was what the store, that was what the whole show was about. 
you bought it for two bucks, I'm going to flip this for 50 bucks. And, and that's, that's how I still source today. If, if we're out in a state sale, everything gets punched into a phone, you know, and this one I would have, you know, I had a bit of an idea because it's stupid Sesame Street, but ultimately comp it, there's your info, no brainer. There was only what, one other listed. It was stupid easy. Yeah, it, it's, it's a good ball. If you don't know all the, all the early seventies, uh, Jim Henson pop, uh, puppets, uh, and we had some when we were growing up. They're all heavily sought after. So you find anything old Jim Henson, especially if it's an actual puppet. Yeah, that that's a quick, easy flip yeah. all the time, all the time. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. So what's uh, l- let's pretend this nuttiness is over. We can move about the country and do things. What's what's the first thing that you want to go do besides a concert? Because I know you'll go to a show. But besides that, what's the now that you're living here? What's the first thing you want to go see when you can move about the country? Um, look, I, I want to go. I want to go. Look, I wanted to go see New York City. Um, I don't know how realistic that's going to be. Even after this, for a little while, I might go south. <laughs> but I mean, um, I, I really want to look at moving somewhere. Where are we? East, west. You know what I mean. I want to start looking into that. Um, yeah. Hello. So I mean. I just want to like climatize to everything. I want estate sales to come back. Like I still check my estate sale app. Like I would, I would take an estate sale, sale. I, I'll, I'll that stupid virus. I know it's there, and I'm, I'm scared of it. But I just want an estate sale, Jason. That's all I want. I'm my life for an thing. estate sale. <laughs> just give it to me, you know, or a goodwill to be open. I'll take a goodwill. I'll stand at the door, let one go in, one go out. I don't know. If that's I think I think I think that's wild. It's going to be for a little bit. Uh, yeah. Apparently, our mayor wants to us to be all the test subjects. So yeah. it won't be me. I'm still going to stay home. Look, I've got asthma since I was eight. The doctor told me a couple months ago I have the lungs of a 72 year old. So it's the first time in my life ever that I'm not like I'm invincible. I'll go do it. I'm like, yeah, I'll stay home for a while. Yeah. Because I, I, I like living. I like my friends. I like my wife. I like my family. I like my house. You like me? I love you. <laughs> I don't plan to go anywhere anytime soon. So being already compromised, having old old man lungs, I'll stay home for a while. I, I didn't got- know. We saw, we saw a note to that. I didn't realize that your mayor was actually Eddie Izzard in drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it is. Like. Now, here's the thing that everyone's learning that no one knew. A, she's not my mayor because we live in Henderson. But yeah. B, the Las Vegas Strip is not in Las Vegas. I know this is going to be blow people's minds and hard to understand, but all the Strip is unincorporated, so they pay less taxes. It's, it's I read that afterwards, after I sent you the message about your mayor. <laughs> I, see, I, and I didn't realize that when we moved here. Like Back in the day when you would pop onto Facebook and post something to be like, you want to put where you are, and it wouldn't be specific, it'd be general. And so it would say things like Spring Valley and, and pa- Paradise, Paradise. And I'm like, why does it never say Las Vegas? Ah, because most of the casinos aren't in Las Vegas. That's why. So congratulations. You've all had a little uh, geography lesson about Las Vegas. All right. Well, Lee, I, uh, uh, when we are able to move about the country, Stacey and I would love to meet you in New York City for a fun weekend uh, of a KISS concert and cocktails. For sure. For sure. You can, um, you know, we'll invite you down to our basement. And you can see our cat. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy wants to know is the basement haunted? Um, not anymore because I got rid of that damn lamp. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now, uh, it's, now it's no, it's fine. I've cleansed it. So right, and okay, I've already figured out our I've already figured out our trip to New York City. So yeah. it's going to be a matinee with Rick and Craig of uh, you know showgirls and stuff, Broadway girls, and then uh, Kiss at night with with Lee. I like Nine it. <laughs> It'll be fun. All right. We'll do, Book, we'll do Book of Mormon and then you can do Kiss. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, anything that you have to promote, Lee, besides yourself? Uh, stay at home. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Six feet distance between that person and the next person. What's your eBay store, Lee? Uh, well, it's not mine. It's my partner's. Um, it is Jersey Devil Thrift. Oh, I like Jersey that. Devil Thrifters. I got, I got on the screen with two underscores. 
There we go. And the Instagram is exactly the same. You can go and have a look there. We of have fun course, with that. We don't cocktails, know, duh. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing on Instagram, but we just post photos. So sounds. I like don't it. know either. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you in Canada, uh, and, and you know, I mean, it's nice if you live in Canada, but there's a few of us not in Canada that are in this group. Tell us about your group, Craig. Oh, we've got, uh, I always say it's, yeah, it's the Canadian resellers and fantastic thrifters group, uh, but we call it the crazy resellers and fantastic thrifters group if you don't happen to be in Canada. But 80% of the people that we have are Canadian. The other 20% are mostly from the U.S. Um, and it's just uh, the equivalent of uh, the the thrifty, thrifting board. It's, it helps. The only difference here is that we actually can talk a little bit more if you have questions about shipping from Canada or issues that you may have dealing with eBay.ca versus eBay.com or things like that. So it's a little more uh, localized with that angle of shipping and issues we may have as Canadians. But overall, it's still just a big uh, helpful thing for resellers who are starting into the... We got a lot of new people who are starting in there too. Their very first post that they're doing on eBay or their very first thing they can try and things like that. So, And... And that's our YouTube channel is Two Dogs Digs. Every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, we do a live show called The Hall Pass. Um, and it's usually some focus of things that we bought and, and fight about and don't know. We never practice. We never have our theme songs correctly. We're nowhere near as <laughs> smooth as some of the transitions that Jason has. But it's still a lot of fun because we try and say we put the F for fun in thrift. Uh, so we will dance for fun. We'll dance and we'll sing and we'll... Oh, we'll look at that fluffy face. <laughs> oh, no. Look at it. Holy oh, no. cow. Oh, no. Look at that tooth. <laughs> wow. that That is straight the witch from Dark Crystal. <laughs> That's haunted. Now, everybody who's watching, if you've not subscribed to uh, Craig and Rick, they are a ton of fun. Uh, we're trying to get them to a thousand, so they got uh, one uh, sixty-four to go, one sixty-six to go. Yeah, so my birthday is two weeks from now, so. <laughs> and they have exactly. they have a ton of fun Question. doing their videos, so uh, we'll be looking forward to Lee's YouTube channel in the near future. Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Hey, can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I actually make a request? Because I've always wanted to see it, and I've asked you about it before, and and I don't know what the thing is, but. Everyone does it now, and I don't think that's a reason to do this, but you you started this, and I think you should show people how it's done, the thrifting videos. I want to see you go, I picked this up for 20 cents, and I'm going to turn this into 50 bucks. Why can't we see those? Yeah, I can do those. I want those back. I miss those. All right. I picked this up for a nickel, and I'm going to sell it for $40. <laughs> And I want the little cha-ching come up here and the cha-ching. All here. right. Yeah, I want. I'm gonna start doing. Uh, I'm gonna start doing smaller videos where they'll debut every day. And, and I did. I did a tiki mug unboxing today, and I'm like, all right, what else can I do? And also, my worlds have really combined. You know, my buddy Chris, who's a tiki friend, was watching tonight, and so my thrifting friends, my tiki friends, have all kind of melted into one. Because even Debbie said today, maybe you want to do two YouTube channels. I'm like, I can barely keep track of one. And I said, but my worlds have really collided. I've got a lot of tiki friends who are now selling. They need help and, and vice versa. So, and, and then thrifting friends who have gotten into tiki because of me. Look at that. Craig's drinking another tiki mug tonight that he got for me. So, you know, uh, and then and when I get to uh, the East Coast, I'm going to smash all of Lee's plastic tiki mugs uh, oh. over at Dad. Wait, I got a tiki bucket when you take that one down. I, I will. I A tiki bucket from vodka. I will kill you right now. That's coming to you. You know it is. It's coming to you. It's got your name on it under this. I will tell you, if that bottle is empty, though, next to it, that's worth a lot of money. Is it? Yeah. So that's the Deadhead oh, Rum. Yeah. So yeah. that when you buy that bottle full of rum, so here's a bonus bowl to end the show. When you buy that bottle full of rum, it costs around $35. Guess what it sells for empty on eBay? Around $35. But, and, and lean in, kids, because here's the little bonus. That bottle just got to change. So that's now the old bottle. So people will probably pay more for the old bottle because there's a new bottle coming out. Oh, wow. So there you go. You can get free rum because they also make a dark chocolate rum in a shrunken uh, zombie uh, uh, monkey head. And again, it costs about 40 bucks and the empty bottle sells for about 40 bucks. <laughs> so free booze. There you go. There's your tips for free booze, kids. <laughs> and it's chocolate, yummy.
Yes. Yeah, I like that idea, Lee. I think I'll do some of those. I bought this for it. I'm going to sell it for I like that idea. I like it, too. All right. Well, <laughs> Debbie, I'm sorry you've lost your producer job. Lee is now the producer. <laughs> Just right, kidding. Just kidding. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please, please ship worldwide on your own. If you don't understand how to do it, Craig can help you in craft. If you're a Canadian, I can help you in the thrifting board along with the rest of the thrifting board. If you're American, <clears throat> even if you're international, we can still direct you in the uh, the right way. And we all buy internationally. And so we should all be selling internationally. So uh, yes, we would do this again. Sounds good. <laughs> We we will we will end on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Truman Capote. Goodbye, Truman. Thank you, Lee. It's good to see you, buddy. I can't wait till this is uh, subsided so we actually can hang out together in real life. Although virtual is fun, I look forward to uh, tipping back a couple and seeing a rock show with you. No, buddy. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Seek your beaches. I'll see you tomorrow night in the uh, store review, and then everyone else. We're going to see what my mom has been hiding for four years on Sunday. Give us a thumbs up down below, please. Give Lee a thumbs up if nothing else. If you don't like Craig, you don't like me, give Lee a thumbs up. And then subscribe and click the little bell. And with that, we're out of here. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.